So in this video you will learn about promise chaining, how it actually works in JavaScript ES6. First we'll see an example of returning a promise from a function. Then we'll see an example of promise chaining. Let's get a function first. So it will be get message. And this function will make use of set timeout. And we'll execute the code inside it after two seconds. We need a callback here to get the data. So we'll pass some message to the callback like hello world. Here we create a callback function. So let's make it my function. There will be parameter message and simply print that message. It's time to call that method which is get message like this. Save it. After two seconds, we'll get okay. I forgot to pass the back now save it and this is the output so this is the way how you can return a data from a asynchronous code using callbacks in es5 but in case of es6 you can simply make use of promises like this you have to return a promise here there will be two method resolve and reject and just cut this and paste it here now remove this callback we don't need this callback and here we call resolve now delete this and put get message we first call this function then you get some data just put it here and with the data we'll call my function and that's it now save it and you'll get the same output another way of doing this will be like this just simply remove this entire function and use this function here like this Save it and you'll get the same output. So this is the way how you can return a promise from a function. Just simply make use of return keyword, new promise object and whatever code you want to execute. Now I'll show you an example of multiple callbacks. Then I'll take that example and convert it into a promise chaining. So just delete this piece of code and create a couple of methods. So the first will be get department. And we'll take a callback as a parameter. Let's make it first get the username. Create one more function, it will be get age. We'll take some data and a callback. We need one more function, it will be get department. Same parameters, data and callback. Then you need one more function, it will be get employee code. Parameter will be data and callback. Then there will be a last method, which will be print info. It will simply take the data and print it. That's it. Now we need some code inside these functions. So in this case, we'll have callback. Then we'll pass some object. Let's make it name property and give it name Peter. The second parameter will be this function, which is get department. This is basically a callback we are passing. 
I'll show you what I'm going to do actually. I'm going to call this get username from here and callback which I will pass that will be get age. So get age function will go here and it needs some data and a callback. So this will be data and this will be the callback. Now let's make use of spread operator here to spread the data and we'll add a age property here. Let's make it 50. So we'll make use of callback and data. In this case, it will be get employee code. I hope you're getting what I'm doing here. So here it will be get department and get department needs data and a callback. So this callback will be get employee code. You know, it's getting complex. But just bear with me because this is how callback hell works. Now, in department, we need some department here. Let's make it production. And here it will be print info. Now just simply copy this and paste it here. Now just simply delete this part because we don't need any more properties. And we'll simply call this print info. We need to pass some data here. That's it. Now just review this entire piece of code for a minute. So we are calling get username this function and we are passing callback which is get age. Get age will go here just to simplify for you get age this is a callback okay and it takes two parameters a data and a callback so this is our data and this will be a callback which is department so here we are calling get department now this department takes two parameters a data and a callback so this is our data and callback will be this get employee code so here we are calling get employee code now here we are calling print info because you can see we are passing print info as a callback and this print info only needs data no callbacks so let's put it print info here and we are simply printing the data so you can see get age, get department, get employee code, print info and we are finally getting our data. Now just save this, go to browser and this is the output. So I think it's time to convert this entire callback hell into promise chaining. So let's simplify this with the help of promises. First remove this thing, we don't need any callback here because we are done with this. And we are simply going to return a promise. We need to resolve and reject. And here we will take this data and use resolve function like this. Delete this thing. Just copy this, paste it here, delete this callback. And just cut it, paste it here, and pass the data like this. Delete this entire thing, we don't need it. Same copy, paste, take the production, and just paste it here. Just copy this paste it here just remove these callbacks here also and remove this thing also now you can see we are no longer making use of callbacks we are simply returning promises from every function now let's create a chain of promises so what is the first function here that is get username so we'll make use of get username here we'll call this function and we'll go for then block then block takes an anonymous function which takes a parameter 
that is pretty much optional and return a promise so we got a function get age it takes a parameter and returns a promise so we can simply put it here like this then we want to go for department so just copy this paste it here now it will go to get employee code then it will go to print info so just paste it here now save this and go to browser and you'll get the same output and now you can see how simplified it is just for the change you can make it marks here and you'll get marks so this is what we call promise chaining every function in the then block is returning a promise this same piece of code you can just copy this and write it here like this now let's make it james and you can see we are not calling get age here we are basically creating an anonymous function which is returning a promise save it and you'll get james here if i'll make use of set timeout so it will basically wait for it to resolve then it will move to next then block let's put five second delay save it go to browser wait for it that's your output i think i forgot the age part so just copy this paste it here and we are expecting a data actually here so it should be data save it and now it's working absolutely fine sorry for that because i accidentally took this piece of code instead of this piece of code i hope you got the point how promise chaining actually works see you in the next video have a nice day